Back. Let's now look at diplomatic relations between South Africa and the United States of America. This is after the U.S. issued that imminent terror attack alert in Senton last week without informing the South African government and having extensive discussions first. Let's look at this now with Professor John Strimlau from VETS University's International Relations Department. Uh, thank you so much for making time, Prof. Let me first get your thoughts on how the U.S. dealt with this terror alert. It looks like they decided to go ahead with the alert, even though the South African government assured them they have no evidence suggesting any risk of terror in the country. Well, well, thank you very much. It's an important subject. I saw it was the headline news and, and the major papers, the City Press and and, and uh, Sunday Times. So it's an important story for your viewers to, to reflect on. Um, I don't have any inside information about the intelligence reports, but what I do know is that politically, next week uh, or a week from Tuesday, Joe Biden faces enormously close congressional elections that will make or break his administration in some ways if the Republicans take over the House of Representatives. The last thing he needs is a, scan, is a, uh, is a terrorist attack that was not forewarned because of the, the Afghanistan withdrawal mess that he went through. The last thing politically he needs. The last thing Cyril Ramaphosa needs with the Nazareth only a month away and don't forget, he got a mandate, a very narrow mandate in 2017 of only 179 votes. So he's got to be sure that he impresses the voters of South Africa, that he's not going to be bullied around by the United States. Now, having said that, let's look at what we do also know, that Wendy Sherman, the Deputy Secretary of State, was here in in uh, May, and, and Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, was in Johannesburg. Uh, a month later in August or two months later in August. And then President Ramaphosa and President Biden sat down and had a very frank and full discussion in Washington, D.C. Uh, in September. So I think both men understand the political realities that they're in. Neither of them want a terrorist attack. Thank God that the pride parade went through without an event and everybody that was there apparently says, at least in the news reports, that they were confident that the security arrangements were yeah. more than adequate for the situation. Yeah, uh, but also the reality is that, you know, often, as I understand from the organizers of the march, they often um, have a lot of people, a lot more people coming to these marches. And because of that concern that was raised, as a result of that alert, um, not too many people, as they expected, really came out um, to march. How does something like this, Prof, impact on diplomatic relations? Are we likely to see a diplomatic fallout? I mean, the president was very clear last week in that he wasn't impressed with the U.S. I think the stakes in the relationship are su such that this is uh, a another ripple in a, in a, in a generally a healthy uh, relationship uh, compared to when, when I was a, a young man and the U.S. was allied with the apartheid regime. I mean, come on, they, we've come a long way in terms of the mutual understanding about the complexities of each other's politics. And I think that this, um, as as with the with the docking of the uh, 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 Russian oligarchs, uh, seven or nine billion rand yacht that's due in, on November 9th in Cape Town. Uh, the the U U.S. was is, is not happy with that, presumably, but it, it, it's South Africa's right to to ha have any one that it wants to have bought docked their yacht, and as. The government mm. has said it was not uh, sanctioned by the UN. I mean, the the oligarch has not been on the list of sanctioned individuals by the UN, and so consequently, the South Africans uh, take a, a more relaxed view. Um, mm. uh, it will not be an issue. Uh, Ukraine was the really big puzzle that I struggled with. I feared that would taint the relationship, but every indication is that uh, Ukraine is not going to complicate the economic trade and investment relationship, the people to people and educational exchanges, the, the, the work in health care and, and, and PEPFAR in particular for, for HIV AIDS and tuberculosis. I think those programs are, are secure. I think that there is a 
firm understanding that this is a democracy mm -hmm. and it will not be bullied and it cannot be seen to be bullied by mm -hmm. political leaders, particularly one as as uh, vulnerable to, uh, to to the to the pressures that uh, Cyril Ramaphosa is, and likewise he knows how vulnerable Joe Biden is to the domestic uh, yeah. uh, uh, pressures. I don't think either of them want to see Donald Trump come back to the White House, Frank. <laughs> well, maybe that will be different if you ask some of the Americans. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the word bully because often the U.S. Um, gets referred to as a bully. You know, I heard someone say the other day that the U.S. has this tendency of undermining host countries by issuing these terror alerts without even providing much evidence to the local authorities. And then that creates just unnecessary panic. How are things like this supposed to be handled, Prof? Because the U.S. has a responsibility to its citizens. You can't really fault them. As you said, the last thing Joe Biden needs is a terror attack that also just affects U.S. citizens, and there was no warning whatsoever. Uh, but that must also be done responsibly, right, in cooperation with the host countries. That's correct. And there's a lot of mixed messages, and I've seen the interviews with with security experts who know a lot more than I do about this, that there was uh, a low-level briefings then that would be standard procedure. The embassy had would hold in the, um, the, the, the security intelligence service representatives from the host country, whether it's in Nigeria or it's here or any place in the world, and they would be briefed. But they will not be briefed on who the sources were. They will not be briefed on what the U.S. does not or does know um, in the sense of de details uh, uh, because, they, you know, this is a, a, a very uh, uh, difficult business uh, for, for governments to be in, and everybody knows that, uh, that the terrorist threats are, are a reality. But the bullying question, you know, the, the one who complains the most about U.S. bullying is Vladimir Putin. Uh, he's really popularized the bullying term, and his bots in, in, in Accra s disseminate this constantly, all the time. So, you know, I, I regret that there were probably pride demonstrators and, and, and paraders who did not go, and, and that's an unfortunate cost. Mm. But at least we did not have anything occur, and you can't prove a non-factual. So we don't know how real the threat was. But it didn't happen. The pride parade went forward. I wish that America was less divided over issues of gay rights and even more so over women's rights. And Wendy Sherman, when she was here, spoke enviously of the constitutional protections that are in uh, this, the law of this land which are not in the U.S. Constitution at all. Yeah. The, there were suggestions, and, and you mentioned so, some of these two cases, there were suggestions that uh, the tensions between the two countries um, have, in, in fact, something to do with the different positions that we've taken on the war um, in Ukraine. Uh, but also there are those who argue that our relations um, with Saudi Arabia didn't really go well with Washington, D.C. Do you think this could have something to do with that terror alert and how it was handled? No, I think you, you have to deal with these issues on, 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 the, on the basis of, of, of what is being uh, learned through the intelligence services. And uh, the, the, the head of the CIA, William Burns, is, is, a, is an old friend of mine and, and, and certainly is a responsible public servant. And I, I don't think they mm -hmm. would have put this intelligence uh, report out if they didn't have some factual basis. Having said that, um, don't don't um, jump to conclusions. I think Clement on the on the on the um, difficulties of governing a democracy. Mm. This is not an authoritarian regime in South Africa. It's not an authoritarian regime. In, in America, I wish that uh, America was more inclusive than it has been historically or is e even today. But that's a struggle which is going to be fought domestically within the domestic politics of the United States. Mm. And to have South Africa as a friend is an important um, uh, affirmation for uh, the, the, the U.S., even though friendships 
are strained. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and similarly, I think for South Africa, as Cyril Ramaphosa said very eloquently in Washington, the U.S. friendship for South Africa is important to South Africa. But South Africa is not going to be bullied. It's not going to be uh, having its, uh, its sovereignty um, uh, mm -hmm. compromised. And they, 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 even, the, even though there's a disagreement on Ukraine, yeah. uh, which is very real, uh, yeah. that's, a, that's an important difference. Yeah. It, but it, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a difference that, that undermines their relationship. Yeah, yeah. If the tables were turned, Prof, how do you think the U.S. would have responded? What, what do you think would have happened um, if South Africa said the same to its citizens in the U.S., issued out this alert without providing the local authorities with enough information and evidence, because that's what we heard from the president. It's what we heard from the minister in the presidency, Monty Gungubele, but also the deputy minister of state security, Zizi Kort. They're saying these people came and said, this is the concern we have. We want to issue this, this, the, the, the threat. But when the South African local authorities said, okay, give us the evidence, what suggested to you that this is a a, a viable possible threat and they were not able to do that and I'm just wondering if this is was our mission in the US issuing this kind of an alert and causing panic how would the US have responded um, <laughs> that's a very interesting question because uh, I, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when uh, W Bush went into uh, Iraq and Thabo and Becky had intelligence that was credible that Saddam Hussein did not have nuclear weapons, and he was extremely frustrated by the fact that the Americans and the British would not take that credible intelligence to heart. But those of us who were opposed to the adventure uh, did take it to heart, and I think that's why it's important to have press coverage of all sides of these issues so that then citizens can make as informed judge as possible. What really concerns me is the disinformation and misinformation out there. And frankly, we haven't that, that to complain about in this instance uh, because uh, the U.S. told what they thought they could tell uh, as they did in the, in the, on the eve of the invasion of, uh, of, of uh, the Russians in, in, in Ukraine. Mm. Um, I, I would like the U.S. to be more forthcoming with its intelligence information, yeah. just so that you can, we can debate it more. But there are limits to what is possible, and I think we can both realize that. And if the South Africans had information about the terrorism and threat in the U.S., they ought to give it to the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the current ambassador, Reuben Brigady, wrote a a wonderful piece uh, for foreign affairs before he became ambassador on on what if america was an african country would 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 they um be lectured to by the by the outside world for being undemocratic because it's such a mess under donald trump yeah. <laughs> so there you are that's the big question thank you very much uh, professor john strimler always appreciate uh, your insights